Hey, what's up everyone? This is Gary coming at you with another video. So first and foremost, I want to thank all my new subscribers, everyone that's liked my video as well as commented on my previous videos. I definitely try to get back to those as soon as I can. But you find me here again with my 2018 rear wheel drive Tesla Model 3. I absolutely adore this vehicle, but and I'm sure if you've watched any of my previous videos, you would know that. But Tesla's not perfect. There's are things that this car as well as the company can improve on. And so I'm gonna give you today the top five things that irritate me about this car. Not saying I don't love it. I will, I absolutely think this is the best purchase I've had in a long time, but they're not perfect. And I'm gonna give you the five things that I think can be approved on this particular vehicle as well as the Tesla brand in general. All right guys, let's bring us to number one, the front. I really like this front. When I go grocery shopping, I put a lot of groceries in here, carry on luggage I throw in here. When my wife, when we go out or something and she wanna leave her purse in the car, I always leave it in here. I keep my charging cables in here. It's just a cool area, like an extra storage compartment that most people don't realize is there if you're not familiar with the brand itself. What I don't like is that this hood here is not automated. So when I open this, it opens, but it doesn't close automatically. I have to force it to close and open it manually. This is how trunks have been used in the past. This is how they always have been. But you have newcomers like Rivian and Lucid having automated trunks, which it just brings more of an ease of access to the compartment. So if it was automated, you know, if I'm sitting in the car, I can just raise it for someone. They can drop something in there. I can lower it directly from the car. It's just an ease of convenience there. So I wish that Tesla, if not even on a three, on the Model S, please give us an automated front. I don't think it adds too much to the cost and all these other brands are doing it. So I know they can do it. I mean, I had a Rivian for about four days. I rent. Having that automated trunk was absolutely cool. Like I didn't even use the actual trunk because I could just go in the front and it had a lot of space. And it's, it's an area that you can't see inside. So if someone's trying to be inferior and try to look inside your car, trying to steal things or do things like that, they can't see anything in the hood. It's, it's completely contained. So please give us an automated trunk. It's not hard, just please do it. That's all I ask. All right guys, so the next thing is the color selections for the car. So. This is my first red car. I think it looks absolutely cool. Like it's a, it's a gorgeous looking car, especially with the ceramic coating um, on top of that. It always has a shine to it, but I wish Tesla had a lot more options for colors. I know that they, you can do wraps and things like that on the car, but if you look at a brand like Porsche or even BMW and things, they have really cool colors like light blues, greens, yellows, things of that nature. For those people that really like those colors, not saying everyone's gonna get it. Most people probably get black, white, you know, the gray, the normal colors, but it's cool to have those as an option. So I wish Tesla would make that um, an option for the cars going forward and, and not just to have wraps, but actually have really good paint quality and, and just more options for that. So another one, this is kind of a combo number two, the rims. I really like my rims. They're from T-Sport line. If you're not familiar with them, I will put a link to their website in the description section below. But Tesla only offers two uh, wheel options. You get the standard, pretty much is just, you know, helps you with the aero. Um, helps you with your range a little bit on your car and they have the sport rims the thing is I always get sport rims But I don't want the same sport or cool looking rims um, or turb turbines or anything like that That everyone else has like I, I thought the sport rims were cool And I think they do look good on the Model S the Model 3 things like that But when you start seeing everyone with the same rims, it kind of takes away some of that um, the exclusivity that you you may look for and and so I always try to go get my own custom rims from a different body shop or somewhere else just so I can have something that looks a little different and unique so I I just you know I, I look at another example is Porsche and stuff like they have so many different rim options for the Taycan like maybe like eight or ten um, rim selections there you can choose from of course they're expensive they're not cheap but you have the option to get those and I wish Tesla kind of went a little more broad, gave us a little more options instead of just the two options. I know they're trying to just crank out cars as soon as possible, but um, I think it kind of diminishes the brand a little bit. It makes them appear more cheap than others, which I mean, of course you, you got some luxury brands that do a lot for the interiors of their car and things like that. But um, I think it would go a long way and I think they would make, in the long run, probably make more money offering a lot of these things and charging for it. Cause most people, if you can get some cool rims from the manufacturer upon delivery of the car, you would, you most likely would do it unless you just really like another brand. I would do that if they look really sick and cool, but you know, I just don't want the same rims. You know, when you have two selections, everyone has those rims. Like it's just not, it's not cool anymore. So that's just something I wish they would do it. Leave that, leave European below. Let's go to number three. All right. 
So number three is software updates. This is a good and a bad thing. I love software updates. I think they're awesome. I mean, you get so many features that you just did not have when you, you originally obtained the car. My car that I purchased in 2018 is totally different today than it was back then. Back then, it didn't even have full self-driving. Now it has full self-driving. It didn't have the sentry mode camera that you can kind of watch people from the car and all that stuff that was added in the update. It didn't have dog mode. It didn't have camp mode. It's a lot of things a lot of cool things video games like steam and stuff i don't have that but those things are all like the games and having netflix access and all that stuff that was all a software update it was all added and i think it's cool sorry for the motorcycle driving by i'm back i'm kind of close to a pretty major road but it is a it's just cool that you're able to get those types of features just simply by a software update like your phone what i will say what makes this not good and something i don't like every so often is because some software updates may break other features. And this is something that you learn and you get used to from a phone standpoint, but from your car is not the best thing. So let's say you get a software update and next thing you know, your car is resetting or something or the screen blacks out or something. I'm not saying this is happening right now or anything like that, but it has happened where some updates are better than others. So um, I had an issue with Apple Music. I had an issue where um, Apple mu Music was work working per perfectly I got a software update and then all of a sudden I couldn't load any songs. I don't know why. And then it just randomly has stopped after, you know, I got another update. I don't have that issue anymore. But it's those are the things that you have to look out for. So I think 90% of the time the software updates are awesome. They're great. You're going to enjoy having a car that can continuously get better and improve over time. But you have to be cognizant that you may get an update that may mess up some other features in the car not saying it happens a lot, but maybe 10, five to 10% of the time, something may be off. And typically they release a quick build, like a 0.1 or dot one build to kind of rectify or fix whatever issue that they found. But just keep in mind, this may happen. And I will say, and I will suggest that if you do run into an issue with a software or, or something or feature in your car that's not working properly, like maybe the browser, or music, things like that, try resetting the car by clicking both um, scroll wheels on the steering wheel um, for the, at the same time for about three seconds, that will reset the, um, the onboard computer. And typically that will fix the issue, but if not, it's most likely the underlying software. So keep that in mind. I'm trying to give you guys some, some perspectives and some tips while I'm doing this as well. So that's one thing. I do love software updates, but I also don't like them when they stop working and, and they hurt something else in the, in the software stack. So just want to throw that out there. Let's get to number All right, four. guys, so for number four, let me sit down for this one. This is having software that's not fully baked. I'm gonna to try to make this a small discussion, but I have a lot of thoughts on this. Um, like I said in the previous and, and number three, I didn't have FSD when this car released. I think it's awesome that I have it now. I honestly didn't even think they would achieve what they have achieved by this car. Most pretty much being able to drive itself on the streets and the highway. I never thought we would even get to this day. So I am happy I have access to such technology that's, you know, eventually it will do some some really absolute and amazing things. Like I, I really think it's the future. Right now it's just not there yet. But long story short, Tesla releases are ha, has you pay for things that they're not fully implemented yet or fully baked in the software of the car. So FSD is one example. Nowadays, on my car, I got in 2018, I have the proximity sensors and things of that nature on the car and the, the original radar, I believe. Tesla now, the vehicles that are getting delivered today do not have proximity sensors on the cars. Um, they do not have radar, at least in the Model 3 and Model Y. I believe there's a radar still on the Model S and X that they're not using is kind of just sitting in um, the back um, background obtaining data, but it's not really being used for autopilot. But what happened is, specifically on the Model X, um, the Model X is really a great car because it can open the front or the um, the passenger door as well as the driver's door automatically. Like it will, doors will open fully and you can get in, hit the brake pedal and it will close. Without, But it was using the proximity sensors for a lot of that detection. So if you're near a car, it's not gonna open as much as it would if you're not near a car. Without the proximity sensors, it's pretty much relying specifically on the cameras that's around the vehicle. And being that the software is not up to where it was previously in previous builds, now when you go to a Model X and open that door on a new, newly delivered one these days, 
it will not open the door all the way, no matter if you're by a car or not by a car. It will just crack it open just enough so you can get your hand in there, pull it. But that kind of defeats the purpose of it being an automatic door. Um, still will close on its own, but it won't fully open. And also, you know, FSD is different on hardware four, you know, uh, vehicles than they are on hardware three. You may have, you know, it was a point where hardware four, and it may still be on, going on now, that they didn't have summon access to their vehicles. Um, they didn't have like the proximity sensor Porsche or data that when you pull into a parking spot, it gives you like on the display to say 30 inches, 29 inches, whatever, to let you know you're getting too close to the hazard that's in front of you. They didn't have that feature when Horror 4 fully, you know, initially released. I think it's there now, but it's still not to the quality of the original feature with the proximity sensors. So you get cars and you pay for things that are not fully baked yet. And so I think that's something that I, I, I don't really agree with on Tesla. I would rather them, you know, test hardware four in the background. Um, you know, if if we're not going to use it to its fully, you know, to its advantage at this at this point in time, then just keep testing it internally. Make sure these features are consistent and up to the quality of how they were when we were using proximity sensors, or not just strictly using camera. Um, and so, I, you know, I don't. I, I love the cars, but. I don't necessarily want to get a car with the newest software or the newest computer, but have less features. Like that doesn't make sense to me. And I know it's, it's pretty much, it's going to help it going forward. It's going to make sure it has access to like Steam and things like that. And hopefully a better autopilot version and stack, stack when, you know, it releases later on in the future. And FSD will be better on those cars than they are on Horror 3. But I don't want to get a hard, leave my Horror 3 car with Summon. I don't use it that often, but I like having the access to it and get a car that's newer, five years newer, but doesn't have access to Summon. Like, I, I don't, that just seems odd to me. So that's just something um, I just wish Tesla would make sure everything is fully baked before they release it to the general public. Now, if there's something strictly like they're testing for beta, that's different. You know, do that in the background. That's fine. But if it's like a feature that has been released previously, and you're still delivering these newer cars and the feature is not on the newer cars, I, I don't think that's a good look. I think they need to improve on that a little bit more going forward, um, especially for their customers. I think it would make a um, make a difference. And for people like me that already own a Tesla, it may make us want to upgrade a lot sooner than we are now. Like I love this car, it almost has 100K miles on it. But you know, I think of those things, like I, I gotta repay for FSD or I gotta, you know, I may not have access to Summon if I do get FSD and, and it's not gonna be the same software. It's gonna actually, the software may be worse if I get the newer car than having my car. So it's, you know, it's still gonna be great if someone is coming from another car that didn't have a Tesla, it's still gonna be mind blowing. But I wanna make sure that I still have access to the features that I depend on and I, I care about. So that's just me. Let's go to number five. All right, guys, and number five is, this is really a first world thing, but it's not even a big thing to me. But I did want to mention it because it's something I've noticed. I really wish that the Model 3, you know, I got mine in 2018. And I'm strictly talking about maybe the newer ones, but not the refresh. Um, and also the Model S and X. I see that the Model 3 refresh has an ambient lighting strip that goes around the dash. And it goes into the back seats doors or passenger doors. Um, it's a cool ambient lighting system. It's about time they got something like that. You can adjust the colors on in on the the main screen um and choose whatever color you like in you know for the led i think that's great I, they should have had ambient lighting a long time ago that was actually ambient lighting where you can change colors i think it's awesome that they're finally bringing it to the model 3 um highland and i can't wait for that to come to america asap but you look at the model 3 highland and that update and then you look at the model s and x that I've seen some of the the newer ones newly del delivered and that they have on the showroom floors at all the Tesla stores, that car still doesn't have ambient lighting, like good ambient lighting. I, I don't know why. It just seems really odd that the flagship cars sometimes get the like get behind on features that the non-flagship cars get. So you would think that before the Model 3 refresh came out, they would have put ambient lighting on the Model S and X, especially the plaids, because you're paying. I mean, at one point, the plaid was one hundred and fifty thousand dollars and it didn't have an ambient lighting strip like 
Like, come on. And then you, you release a Model 3 that's, you know, hopefully the base model may be like 45000 and it has this ambient lighting strip that's customizable and it's, it looks cool. It just seems like you would have started putting some of that in the, the bigger, the newer, more expensive cars. Um, I guess not newer, but in the more expensive flagship cars or vehicles before you put in the Model 3. And then it's odd that I, I saw an article that in China, they added Model Ys. The Model Y in China has a ambient lighting strip like under the kind of the where the air comes out on the dash where the wood is. Um, but they didn't add that to none of the Model Ys in America. Um, and I don't know if they added it to the Model Y in Europe. So it's that's coming out of Giga Berlin. So or, uh, so it's it's just weird. It seems I, I I I see I understand sometimes that there's it's different depending on where you know where you are and how quickly you can get these factory upgrades done and sometimes you don't do them all in one one sitting because the vehicles are coming out of numerous factories. I, I get that. It just it just seems odd, you know, that your your the S and X are getting kind of left out and the Model Three is getting some really cool updates, new updates. But then the S and X are not. Then the Y gets an update in China only, but not the Model Y in America or in Europe. Um, yeah, it just it's just really, I don't know. I guess I, you know, I kind of wish that sometimes the upgrades just happened across the board. Like when the Model Three came out the Highland and it was announced in Europe, I just wish it was also announced in America because. It's got to be hurting sales. If I see a car that I know is coming and I see everyone all the, posting these YouTube videos of this vehicle in Europe and driving around reviewing it and it's like, I really want that one. Why would I upgrade to a new model? And I was thinking about getting a Model 3 or something. Why would I upgrade to a new Model 3 right now if, if I wait a few months or so or whatever, I can get the brand new one with the newer suspen suspension and, and all that stuff. I, it just seems kind of... It, I don't know. It's got to be hurting sales. I, that's just my thought. Then the Model Y is like, okay, they released one with some ambient lighting in China. I would assume it's going to work its way into Europe and America eventually. But if I'm thinking about getting a Model Y, I want the one with ambient lighting, I, especially if the price is the same. Why would I get one now here if I can wait and get like a newer feature that I know is out because I see it in China? I don't know. That's these are things that, you know, if you guys got opinions, please put them in comment section below. I would try to respond and look at them. It's just, it just confuses me. I, I don't know if it confuses you guys. I still think they're amazing cars. Like if you don't care about ambient lighting and stuff like that, or ha just having the new, the new, new, then, you know, get the car. Like you're, they, they're so discounted nowadays. Like, I mean, interest rates are high, but if you can afford it, definitely get the cars. If you, if you, you know, really want it, it just seems odd to me why it's, it's differences in, in certain areas and, and stuff and then why the flagships are not getting features that the lower level cars are getting it, it it just throws me off so so yeah those are the top things that kind of irritate me about my vehicle and just tesla in general um let me know what you guys you know if you guys have a tesla you know what what are things that you dislike about your car i mean i i can talk about the things i love about this car all day but you know i know you guys hear that all the time of course i want to try to balance it a little bit so these are the things that kind of negatively affect me um and that i think about when i'm thinking about whether or not i should buy another tesla or or upgrade or go to another you know place or whatever Th these are the things i think about so i'm just curious what you guys think about um with your teslas if you have the if you have one so um or if you don't want to have if you don't have one what's your opinion on those things so so yeah thank you guys if you made it this far thank you for watching the video i definitely appreciate all the support and until the next one, I will see you guys later. Enjoy your weekend. Peace.